Hey, everybody. Welcome into the Grace Point Daily Podcast. Jeremiah Johnson alongside Dr. R.B. Maynard, Verse by Verse Edition. We are unloading on you this year in 2022. We have 365 one-year Bible podcasts along with Dr. R.B. Maynard and some other stuff along the way. So you will have more than enough to satisfy all of your needs in 2022. Right, Dr. R.B. Maynard? Everybody can just throw away their televisions and watch Grace Point all that's day. That's right. So anyway, uh, one-year Bible journey. Uh, do you want to hype that up for us? Do you think that's important? I do think it's important. <laughs> Are you taking the challenge, the one-year challenge? I am, I'm listening, and then with my studying, you know, reading and writing, I write down all my scriptures, and so yes, yes. Yeah. I was talking about today, w- one thing that's good about, especially for people my, like me, is that it's it's very, it, it's a good discipline in general, just because you can, it, it's amazing when you're doing that, you can see like how easy it is to not read the Bible or right. get behind and be like, whoa, it's been like three days since I actually right. read the Bible because right. I'm only on day whatever, and I should be on this day. Mm-hmm. And that kind of shows you I took a it bit. one time, um, I probably have mentioned it before, but I took one year I decided that I was going to read the Bible and write notes for my boys. So I read it through twice that year, and I just divided it up in pages. I took my Bible and divided up however many pages there were, and when that was done, then I just read those pages. If it happened to be a title page or an outline page that wasn't really any big mm-hmm. deal, then that then I didn't read as much that day. But so that year, I wound up going through it twice, and then I gave them those Bibles for Christmas that had yeah. notes. So, so it's that was a pretty neat. Not experience. easy. Yeah. It's hard. It's it's hard and it's hard and in those kind of things and but it's good. So go through the Bible and now we are in your portion of the podcast. We are doing the life of Jesus. Right, right. So and take us away. We are in Luke one nineteen, and this is uh, you. You can't talk about the life of Christ without uh, talking about John the Baptist that came before him and the story of Zacharias and all of those kind of things. So uh, this is <coughs> excuse me. This is a story of. Uh, Zacharias, when he's uh, offering the incense, and the angel appears to him, and it says in verse uh, 119, it says, And the angel answering, answering him said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Now, I know we got all these these and thous, and, but I started through the uh, uh, chronological Bible, and the one I have is actually King James Version. So for, for all you King James people out there, this is going to be really great for you. But uh, And this is the same. Gabriel, we talked about, it, I think, last time that Gabriel is always kind of the, the good news angel, always coming with good news. And he's spoken to Daniel. He's spoken to uh, Zacharias and to Mary. And so he's a familiar sight. I mean, mm-hmm. they haven't seen him. All these other people haven't seen him before. But he is the, the messenger of good news. And I love the, the phrase, I, I think, you know, with uh, not just angels, but with the Lord himself speaking to us sometimes, it's, uh, you know, he doesn't have to give us any kind of proof, but sometimes he just chooses to because he knows it's a difficult thing for us. And so it says, and, and I love this, it says, I stand in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we like to think I'd like to see an angel and, you know, standing in this room and, what would that look like? Would they be glowing? Would they have wings? Would they, you know, all these different things. But I think that phrase would be, wow. I mean, this really is an angel who has been in the presence of God. You know, it's one thing to hear a word from the prophet or Mm -hmm. something like that, but to say, I stand in the presence of God. And behold, in verse 20, and behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And he actually has become deaf and dumb, um, and you'll find that later because it talks about, uh, if you jumped ahead to verse 62, it says, and they made signs to his father. So uh, you wouldn't have to make signs to someone if they were just right. deaf, you, or you, know, you could write things or whatever. So probably deaf and dumb. Uh, and this is a, a you know, Thank God that he doesn't punish us every time we have disbelief. You know, I've yeah. got a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I mean, and, and it's not really even a, a blatant disbelief. It's more of a the angel just knows that this is a hard thing for him. 
And so, uh, you know, and, and the other thing about it is that, that God keeps his promises even in our unbelief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. this is a That's matter a of fact. And so it does. It, it's kind of like God saying, I, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you believe it or not. It's going to happen mm-hmm. or it did happen. Yeah. You know, we like, to, well, I just don't believe that. Well, you don't believe that based on what? I mean, <laughs> you're wiser than the word of God and what God spoke and what the angels spoke and all those things. So, so you know, he there's some punishment there. Uh, you know, it's all in God's plan. Why did he de- decide to punish him for something that doesn't seem that big of a deal to us? But verse 21 says, And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. We've talked about that. They're not... He's going to come out and pronounce a blessing over them. Um, I don't. I didn't see anywhere where there was a, a time limit for how long the, uh, the priest or whatever could be in the temple. Okay. But it just was that they were not supposed to tarry long there because we know that the punishment for offering the sacrifices unworthily was death. Mm-hmm. And so if they didn't come out for quite a while, then they might assume that he's died they might become fearful or whatever so yeah. it was you know I, uh, some people would probably say well that's a message to the pastor you know you better keep your mm-hmm. sermon short you know <laughs> we might we might think something's going on if your sermon gets too long but verse 21 or, well they waited for him uh it was supposed to be a cons- uh, short prayer um afraid that he might be dead and there was a uh, one place and and again we read some things in historical accounts not everything is Biblical. Sometimes people say, well, where is that in the Bible? Well, it's not in the Bible. It's a historical statement or from one of the rabbis or whatever. But it says, one of them says, for many high priests that were unfit or made alteration in the service died in the Holy of Holies. Now, we don't have record of that. That was a threat of what something, uh, Mm -hmm. but we don't really have biblical accounts that says this guy went in and he uh, died. Um, we mentioned, I think, before that the Simeon the Just talked about going in there and seeing um, an angel every time he went in, that the angel went in with him and came out with him. And then he knew he was going to die one day because the angel didn't come out with him. That was his message mm-hmm. to him, I guess. That um, So, uh, you know, this is, uh, you have to get, you have to cut Zacharias some slack here. I mean, yes, <laughs> he, yes he's godly, he's one of the priests, but... It's the same principle for us of pastors that we just think that they are supposed to be, you know, above any kind of sin, above any bad thought, above above ever saying anything wrong or offensive or whatever the case may be. Uh, And it's just not true. These guys, I mean, they were prophets, and yes, they're very spiritual, but everyone fails Mm -hmm. (laughs) at some point. And so verse 22 uh, and when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. So he's made hand gestures or whatever to come, yeah. come to him, but he he can't speak. And I think what a um, – it says he could have been removed from the, from the priesthood because he couldn't fulfill his duties. And and I think about, you know, he's waited all this time to, to perform these duties – He's finally getting to do this. Then this event happens while he's in there. Then he comes out. He's not able to pronounce the blessing over the people. And then, you know, I just, again, we have to think of these things. These are examples to us of, yes, it's a story about what happened then. But I think all of these things, if we can't relate somehow to today, (laughs) then it is just a historical story. And I thought, you know, the thought just happened, what if something happened to you and you couldn't speak for some reason? I mean, an uh-huh. illness or <laughs> whatever. I mean, is it going to be like, well, sorry. I mean, you know, you're out of here. Yeah. And, you know, you would probably do that at some point because it's like, well, what what am I going to do? <laughs> I mean, yep. if I can't preach, if I can't podcast, if I can't pray over people, if I, you know, you would probably... But, you know, it's so instant sometimes that when a pastor gets ill for something that's, you know, an extended period of time, I think there's a lot of churches that would be like, well, mm-hmm. 
you know, hey, if he can't preach, yeah. then we need to let him go. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's I, what Affleck is for, by yeah. the way. Shout out to Affleck. <laughs> Oh, Not yeah. a sponsor of the show, but yeah, yeah. Where is the duck <laughs> yeah. gonna walk across here? <laughs> second, I there. don't have Affleck, but I did learn. I was like, "What is Affleck for?" Oh, it's for, to cover if I ever could not do my job. Oh, That's really? what it's for. That's what Affleck insurance is all about. So, Dave Ramsey, I learned that from Dave Ramsey. I it's did actually not where I learned that. it. So, because he would like I'd, my voice for uh-huh. him and be his radio show. Right. So right. then you buy Affleck sh- insurance that covers X amount of dollars. You know, you're mm-hmm. gonna pay a premium. That's yeah. what it's for. So. Mm. I didn't know. Let's see. <laughs> now you've all learned something yes. today. So, so I don't know if it was hand gestures, head gestures, lip reading. I mean, uh, what are the those kind of things? But I think you know churches should learn a lesson from that. That you know when your pastor is sick, and and honestly, this church has practiced that because Brother Graham mm-hmm. went through some extended times. Uh, he had a stroke at one point, and wow. he went through some extended times where he just could not preach, could not come to the church, and. It was, we covered. Mm-hmm. I hate to say that. That sounds yeah. kind of <laughs> sounds right. secular that we covered for him. But mm-hmm. you know what I mean. The church was in no way thinking we need to be rid of him if he can't preach yeah. or, uh, you know. <laughs> Time to dispose of the so, pastor. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's in, in his case, you would have to think he would be concerned about mm-hmm. that very thing. That Yeah. Well, am I, you know, am I out now, or, or what's going to happen? But verse twenty three, and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house, and so he still was able to finish what he was doing to the best that he could do it. Um, it, it wasn't like that moment he was became disqualified. Whatever it was, he. Um, whatever it was he was doing at the time he could continue to do but um you know i i think the mixed emotions that someone has when they go through these things again they're godly and you would think they would say well this is god's will and so i'm just going to accept it and but you know i can't imagine the thoughts going through his um head that he got i mean he he got to to offer the incense he got to offer a blessing or would have got to offer the blessing over the people. He got to see an, an angel. His family would have been proud. Um, he would have been humbled by, you know, why did I get to, to see this? But then it's like, but this is just a little more than I can handle. And and why is God waiting till we're mm-hmm. old, you know, to do this? And, and why didn't uh, why didn't he let me do this while I was young? And, and why is he punishing me for something that's so trivial? I mean... Uh, you know, all I did was doubt a little bit. And again, yeah. I, man, if God punished me when I had a doubt, I'd, right. I'd be in big trouble, <laughs> you know, because I don't care how godly you are. There are just times when you're like, mm-hmm. man, is this, you know, and I always tell my Sunday school class, when I have those thoughts, they are passing thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I don't sit around and, well, let me think about this and see if God's really real and, See if God's yep. really, I don't have those kind of moments, but I do have moments when you're just kind of looking up in the sky like, is there really something out there? I mean, is there? Yeah. Are, are these people who have gone before us, are they really alive somewhere? I mean, it mm-hmm. just seems, it seems so impossible Yeah. that sometimes you have to just stop and say, as strange as it all is, I still believe. Yep. Well, what did he say? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all have it at, at times. So, And if you're dwelling on it, there's there's a problem. <laughs> right, yeah. If you're trying to figure yes. out if it's real, then, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a problem. But uh, verse 24 and 25, and it says, After those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. She, pro- I don't know why necessarily she was hiding away unless it was a uh, uh, afraid of what people might say about you know her becoming pregnant at such an old age and I, I, it doesn't really give us that but um, but anyway she probably hid herself for the entire nine months of this pregnancy maybe she just didn't feel good mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean yeah. she's an older lady and 
Um, the next new Bible version is going to say quarantine. She quarantined. Yeah, she quarantined. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because of the uh, pregnancy pandemic that was yep. going on during the time. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, the, the, and it was a mother's duty to protect the Nazarite even in the womb. And they had been told that he would be a Nazarite, that he mm-hmm. wouldn't take you know, wine, and we talked about that last week. But um, in Judges 13.4, it talks about a mother with a baby in the womb, and it says to drink no wine, to eat nothing unclean. It's talking about caring for that baby, not just... I mean, we have ladies today who, uh, when they're pregnant, they try to eat right and mm-hmm. do right things because there's nourishment for that child through their bloodstream, and so they're trying to do the right thing. But not. it was not only just about health. This was a spiritual yep. thing that said these are the things to not do to make sure you take care of that baby even in the womb. Mm-hmm. And that's why, I, you know, again, there are so many scriptures in the Bible that are anti-abortion. Yes. I mean, this is talking about caring, the care for a child in the womb. I mean, the Bible is really full of references to a baby, to a child before it's born, and the importance of that child. Mm-hmm. You know, before you were formed, I knew you. I mean, in your mother's womb. Yep. I mean, all those things. Um, so I... If you want to argue abortion, I would suggest you not use the, yeah, or or try to say that the Bible (laughs) doesn't say anything about it because it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, It doesn't come right out and say "thou shalt not," but it's pretty evident that there's a great love for God of a child that's in the womb, Mm -hmm. and very natural for a mother to want to care for that child in the womb. Make sure that everything's done right, and in this case, even spiritually speaking, yeah. Um, I suppose in our time, maybe it would be a mother listening to uh, worship music, you know, while she's mm-hmm. pregnant, that to soothe that child in the yeah. womb. I, I don't know, but could be argumentative. But uh, thou shalt not murder, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, well. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to get into a, a right. abortion debate here this morning, but uh, shouldn't be a debate. But it is, but uh, and and uh, it says uh, it talks about uh, you've taken away my reproach among men. Um, you know we talk about bullying mm-hmm. today, and we act like it's a new thing. And I don't know about you, but yeah, I've seen it in school. I've done it, uh, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> I probably have in a roundabout way. I wasn't yeah. the guy who. Yeah, I was a big bully, but there's no doubt. Punched some kid and took his lunch money, or I, yeah. you know, I wasn't that kind of a bully. I probably bullied in the <laughs> sense of, of having my little clique and not wanting to, you know, in a sense that's bullying, not to want to include somebody mm-hmm. in your yep. group or whatever. But, but you know, especially in the in the word, the bullying really of of women was, I mean, that was a big thing, and. I, you know, I'm not exactly sure where that got started, but that was never God's plan for women to be so subordinate, so looked down on, so um, not used in in God's kingdom or whatever. Mm-hmm. But somewhere along the line, just because it was, there's a phrase: just because God allows something doesn't mean He approves of it, and so. I think that's what what you're looking at here with uh, the reproach of men. Uh, she's probably going to be looked down on. Uh, you know, I don't even know. Uh, the reproach may have been part of Zacharias. Hey, Zacharias, you're not man enough to, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah. guys are guys, and he's probably got friends who are not necessarily spiritual or whatever. And, um, you know, uh, we've heard things, well, maybe... God didn't let you have a baby because, you know, uh, something would have happened to that baby and you wouldn't have been able to handle it. And people try to justify mm, right. someone not having a baby. I, I don't think we know any more about that than we know about why people die, mm-hmm. <laughs> why good sure. people die and, and yep. those kind of things. And so, but there there is, and some of that's what people bring on themselves. You know, well, people are probably saying this and, and I must not be a good mother because God won't let me have a baby and, you know, all those kind of things. So, so taking away the, the reproach, in other words, 
and it was very important in the Bible to have a son. I mean, yep. that was a that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And so for her, this reproach that she's had, even it was unjustified, but thank you, Lord, for not only allowing me to have a son, but now the reproach of men has been taken away from me. Verse 26, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So uh, this is... These stories become, they're, they're so prophetic. This was 500 years before that Daniel predicted, well, I say predict, but yeah. uh, prophesied that these things would happen. You can go back and read. That's why I, I, I've said it before when I have those doubts about things and I, you know, I don't understand, God, why you're doing this and why you're doing that. When I have those thoughts, I just have to look back <laughs> at the Word and say, but I believe all of these stories. Yeah. Right, and if I believe they're true, then I have to believe that everything else is true. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can pick the things out of the Bible that you want to believe. Yeah, I think we've talked about the importance of the word. I think you're all in, or you're not. It's. I don't think you can have it. Well, I believe this book, or I believe this prophet, but I don't believe this prophet. And and so, how can you not believe that the word of God is true when so many things? have been proven not just spiritually but but physically yeah. things that have been proved we were talking about uh the other day when i lived at fight at the big city of fidelity you know yes. uh when i lived out there we had seven acres and i had we had moved here from california so you know of course california everything's asphalt and yep. you know <laughs> but uh we had that seven acres out there and it was pretty rocky ground and i constantly found i mean not every rock you picked up, but I don't know how many times I found uh, shell fossils and fish fossils at Fidelity. Now, where did that come from other than a worldwide flood mm-hmm. that, you know, that scattered that everywhere yeah. for that to happen? And so, you know, there's so many physical things mm-hmm. that, that prove the Bible, too. So, so anyway, how can you believe part of it and not believe all of it? But, uh, so you're saying Bill Nye is wrong. I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't know him personally, yeah. but I would say uh, probably not. Uh, we probably don't want him to have him as a guest yeah. speaker. So, uh, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Uh, and, and this is, uh, like I say, it's all been predicted. It, the, there's a statement that says the whole country of Galilee was mean and contemptible. At the time, and this is where um, uh, they they didn't they hadn't had a prophet for a long time now. Uh, John seven fifty two said they replied, "Are you from Galilee too? Look into it, and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee." John one forty six Nazareth can anything good come from there? <laughs> so this this whole area again, God chooses to use uh, to bring Christ into. Uh, it, I, I thought about it in respect of, of even like a revival. Well, why does God, why did God bring the big revival to Brownsville? Why mm-hmm. not somewhere? What was it about Brownsville? And I don't know if you followed that much, but. Yes, I did. But what happened with that, a lot of it was people began to think that if they did the same thing, they yeah. would have the same result. Yep. Right, right. And so. <laughs> same songs, right. same. Right. Preachers use the same mannerisms. Mm-hmm. Worship teams sing the same songs. Yep. Change. It yeah. really did change worship. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that's where the turning point was, I believe. Yeah. In, in the worship style that we have today, I believe that was one of the big turning points. Mm. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but, but you know, people say, well, what did they do? Well, they prayed. Well, other churches have prayed and yeah. had somebody at the church 24 right. hours a day or whatever, and... Uh, you know, they didn't get the same results. Uh, why are some churches bigger? You have a better preacher at this church than this church, mm-hmm. but this one struggles and the other one's... Yeah. Uh, there's just no rhyme or reason sometimes to mm-hmm. yep. to these kind of things. But uh, so, it, again, in that time, it would be that same principle of in their unbelief, well, surely God would have brought him to Rome or someplace else. He wouldn't have had a the prophet born... Uh, in Galilee, in that area. 
And, you know, when I went to Israel, actually Galilee was my favorite place to be. It was, you know, you had the Sea of Galilee. It was more where you could really walk around and feel like, hey, this is, this is the lake. This is the shoreline, you know, that somewhere along here, mm -hmm. those things had to happen because it's not that big yeah. of an area. And it's still kind of a village atmosphere. Galilee is not as, I mean, you know, you go to Jerusalem. It's not an urban right. environment, if you yeah. will. Yeah, you go to Israel. I mean, there's skyscraper motels and all kinds of things like that there, mm -hmm. you know. But Galilee is still pretty, I, hate, I don't know if you say quaint, but it's just more where you could picture some of those things. But verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and to a virgin's name, and the virgin's name was Mary. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, but being pledged or espoused is, is the same as marriage or it can be the same thing as engaged in our sense. The only difference was um, it had to do with um, sexual relations. So uh, you could have all the same rights and all the same uh, principles, but you, you didn't sleep together until you were hmm. married. That was the, the idea. And so even though a lot of it was very similar, that was the one exception that being espoused, if you considered it an engagement, um, you were not to sleep with the person until you were officially married. Uh, we've kind of forgotten that a little bit today, but um, but that's what. Uh, and then there, it, it, this was a strange thing too. But it was there was a ninety day waiting period because you know in those times they didn't just like some people today. Oh, they meet, they think they're in love, they run away to Vegas and get married and. Uh, you know, just on a whim, mm -hmm. almost. There was a 90-day waiting period, and that 90-day waiting period, now, today wouldn't be so, <laughs> but it was a 90-day yeah. waiting period to make sure they weren't pregnant by somebody else. I mean, did, that's... Did you practice this with Stella? Was it 90 <laughs> days? Yes, yes. Was, okay, yep, all right. We waited. <laughs> yep, we waited 90 days. Just making days. sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Praise yeah, God. Because I had to make sure she wasn't having somebody else's baby, <laughs> you know, but... Okay. Uh, but that's what good, that whole good. thing was about. It was about... Mm -hmm. uh, Making sure, so so. in other words, if, if Mary and Joseph got together and then she's pregnant, she has this baby, uh, everybody could say, well, mm -hmm. she, wait a minute, she had it, they start counting the numbers. Yeah. You know, we do that today. Well, wait a minute, was she pregnant when they got married? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what people do sometimes. Yeah. And so um, that's all that was about was, and, and the, the word to be espoused, or pledged has to do with adoption and protection. So it's it, those words are about bringing somebody into your family through marriage or whatever. It's about um, uh, adoption almost. In other words, you become part of that family even mm -hmm. though you're not blood. And it says um, her name was Mary. And, and we get a little confused because we have Mary Magdalene, Mary of Bethany, Mary the mother of James, Mary, the mother of John Mark, Mary of Rome. <laughs> it's um, a popular name. Yeah. They said, uh, I read where it said 25% of the women in biblical time were named Mary. So, yeah. so and it is confusing because sometimes you'll say, well, wait a minute, this Mary was at the cross, but that was Mary, the mother. But yeah, Mary Salome, you know, you start, it's hard to figure out. There, There's even debate about uh, the woman who washed Jesus' feet, was that the same Mary that was, you know, yeah. Mary Magdalene? And, uh, you know, so you can get into all those arguments about things. I just imagine you know, using but, that as a young man, you know, trying to pick up ladies, being like, let me guess, your name yeah. is Mary. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, how did you know? <laughs> okay. You and, look like a Mary. Yeah. What was, what's yeah. the old line? You, <laughs> you filed from heaven. You must be an angel. You from heaven. So. Verse 28, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. You are not uh, better than someone else. Being favored uh, just means God's showing you his favor. It does not mean because I'm favored, I'm better than you are. And, and we see this with Mary because she is very um, humble with all of this. She's very 
um, why why me kind of thing. She's not like, oh well, this doesn't surprise me because I'm, you know, I'm pretty spiritual. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was all a uh, <laughs> she was favored, and men, not just men, but you will be called uh, blessed. Now, where are we on time here? Uh, right at the thirty minute mark. Okay. There, for well, those maybe we better wrap it up right there. But uh, but anyway, uh, this whole uh, this whole story, it, it's pretty unbelievable but I, I this probably comes in a little bit more next next time next week whenever we do this but anyway um the whole thing with mary uh, and the story being so unbelievable i used i used to think well why did god choose that time period to do things instead of like today mm-hmm. why didn't jesus come yep. in 2022 or whatever well we have so much trickery now, so much magic, so much. I think it would be extremely difficult. I mean, it was extremely difficult then, but I think it would be extremely difficult today for anybody to believe that a miracle was really a miracle. Oh, how did they feed 5,000? Well, let me show you the trick. Mm-hmm. You know, how did, how did Mary a virgin? Well, she wasn't really a virgin. They did this and they did this. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's yes, so it's many a medical. things. <laughs> yeah, and and I and and the part we'll probably get into more is is this all sounds like man? Wouldn't you love to been Zacharias and saw an angel? Wouldn't you love to have been Mary and Joseph and be the the mother and father of of Jesus? And I mean, you think about all those things, but then there's so many other things to think about uh, on the not necessarily well negative side. Yeah, you're. Your daughter is going to do great things, but mm-hmm. then this is going to happen to her because of those great things. This terrible yeah. thing is going to happen. We don't want to hear that kind of news, yeah. and that's basically what's coming up. So anyway, we'll finish it up there today. I could have gave you the air horn. Had an air horn somewhere along. Oh, yeah. sorry. Here we go. Air horn. You're all finished. Verse by verse, Dr. R.B. Maynard, thank you for joining us. And again, we encourage you hop on the one-year Bible journey as well with us. So thanks, guys. We'll talk to everyone next time.